Hi everybody, my name is Robert Levy. I work with Hagerman and Company. I'm one of the software specialists and today I'm just going to show you a quick tip on how to do your floor finishes in Revit a more efficient way. So here's a layout that I've done of a commercial space. Okay, This would be something like a department store where you have different finishes and different sections uh, and different aisles. So what you can do here is uh, you could use the parts tool to define those different finishes. And one of the reasons why I use the parts tool to do it is because it's very easy to edit. When you use the parts tool, you can use one slab and you can divide that one slab into separate parts and you can apply the material separate. So if I were to edit this slab, I could select it and I could go to edit the division and then I can uh, edit my sketch lines very easily. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a similar situation that I have here. I'm going to create it on the right side. So the first thing you want to do when you're using parts is you want to make sure that your view properties, okay, these are the properties that stay here on the left side of your screen. You want to make sure that though the parts, okay, there's a parts visibility, it should say show both, okay. That way your parts will not disappear on you by accident, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very simple rectangular slab. So I'm just going to use the floor tool. I'm just going to draw a square and I'm going to hit finish. Now the way that I would do this is I would have two floors. I would have one floor that would be used by your structural engineer or your architect. And then you would have another floor which represents all your finishes which would probably be about a half inch thick and uh, that would be the one that you would divide into parts. So what you can do is you can actually take this and select the floor and then there's a parts um, tool it says create parts so you click on create parts and you click on divide parts now you can go and edit the sketch so click on edit sketch and then just sketch lines on top of the original slab Once you're finished, just hit finish and you should see some green lines that divide up the parts and then finish again. Now you've got separate discrete parts. Now all you have to do is select one of the pieces and look at properties. Under properties it will usually say material by original and that will be checked. That means that this part of the slab is inheriting the materials from the original big slab that I had drawn. I don't want it to inherit the materials, I want to assign a specific material to this part. So what I'm going to do is under properties I'm going to uncheck the box material by original. I'm going to change the material here instead of default floor. I'll choose something else and choose something that's a little bit more appropriate for what we're doing. Okay, and I've just applied a material to that, and that's pretty much it. You just select, you go to properties, and you uncheck the material by original, and you just choose a material. Okay, then later when you have to edit, okay, you can select one of the parts you can edit the division and then you can edit the sketch and as long as your sketch lines okay as long as they go all the way through the slab then the software will divide up that slab into pieces for you okay that's pretty much it I mean it's one sketch line you can move it all right. If I were to do this without using the parts tool I would have to create several separate slabs and those several slabs would take longer to edit. 
the materials of because they're separate parts and it would take longer to actually edit if I had to resize one of the pieces so the parts tool is really where it's at when you're actually dividing up the materials so I hope this helps and I hope you can use this in a future project thank you very much